Hello, hello, and thanks for joining me as I go into another jaunt into the world of Azure Synapse Analytics. This time we're looking at a new feature in the Synapse Link area, which is our ability to use Synapse Link not just for Spark pools, but now for SQL on demand. So Synapse Link is that thing that if I've got Cosmos DB and I've got a load of JSON data in there, I can turn on Synapse Link, I can make an analytical store, and that means inside Cosmos DB, completely black box, don't know what's going on, can't see it, it's going to create a little essentially data lake of its own. It's creating parquet copies of the data asynchronously. So anytime I change something in Cosmos DB, it updates its parquet store, and then I can just query that parquet store from inside Synapse and do really, really fast, good aggregation style queries on top of my Cosmos DB without having to trawl through all the JSON records. So that's fantastic. It saves us a ton of effort in terms of linking things up. And um, the new thing that we can now do use serverless SQL to do it is great. Just saves a lot of time. Just means I can just open up Management Studio, Data Studio, write a bit of SQL, and immediately query Cosmos DB, which is really cool. And one of the things that enables is a pattern called the Lambda architecture. So that's a classic big data architecture where you have two things, a batch view and a stream view, or a speed view. And essentially our batch view is the big, chunky, aggregated thing. That's the thing that's doing the due diligence, the accuracy checking. It's doing all of the validation that you expect in like a data warehousing ETL. So we have one big chunky data engineering style batch script that says, read the data, work out all the results, spit out an aggregated result set. And then on the other side, we've got our speed view, which is kind of saying, since I last ran the aggregated set, get in anything that's happened since and give me kind of a top up query, a super lightweight. It's not gonna be as robust as my batch view, but then when I next run the batch view, I'll get all of those records in there and they'll go through the proper process. So it's getting real time records, essentially. If you want a real time query, that's on top of your full original data source, that's also doing some good rigor and aggregations, then you can get the Lambda pattern to work quite nicely. So I'm gonna go through that quickly. We'll show you how you can use the new serverless SQL over Cosmos DB's analytical store. And we'll go into how you build a really quick little Lambda architecture pattern using Synapse Spark pools and using Synapse SQL on demand. That's the plan. So don't forget to like and subscribe if the video is useful. I'll drop a note to the previous Synapse Link video where we set up the Spark Pool integration. And as always, let us know in the comments if you use this, if you have any questions, if you're not a fan of the Lambda architecture, because a lot of people have gone the full Delta route, but that means you need a server turned on. So it's kind of up to you about how you play with this pattern. But let's have a look. Okay, right, here we are in the Azure portal. So first things first, I've got my Cosmos DB. So this is my data source. This is where all my sales data is. I can nip into Data Explorer and we can see what's here. So I've got two really, really basic collections of products, one which is fairly static, and I've got my sales. So the sales is where we're looking at today. That's where all my different items are. I've got loads of different items in here. And this is just really simple, just basic sales information. So I've got my sales IDs, purchase order, I've got my total. So that's my sales total. That's the thing I want to aggregate. I want to know how many sales I have and what's the total amount that I've sold in this time period? Really super simple. We can go and use that to add things up. I do also have a little thing in here, a little notebook to generate sales that I used last time. I'll be using that later, but for now, that's all we need. The fact I've got sales and I wanna query these sales. Okay, so let's go over to Synapse. And this is my latest gripe. Oh, oh, it just annoys me. So in the Synapse portal now, so there used to be a little button here saying open Synapse Studio. It's disappeared. That's gone. Now we no longer have a button to open the thing. And it's now down here. We've got this big chunky button. I was like, yeah, fine, chunky button. I like it. And that's not, it's not a button. Oh, we can't click anywhere. The only way to open the studio now is that tiny little button, which seems crazy. I don't know if I'm missing something. I don't know if it's like a gigantic button that I'm just not seeing, but it does seem crazy to get into the studio where all of the magic actually happens. It's been made harder. Anyway, so if we go in here, we can look at a few things and we can see I've already linked my Cosmos DB. So <laughs> when it's figured things out, we should be able to see I've got a linked service to my Cosmos DB that tells me everything that's going on. Or not, maybe I've offended it. I don't think it likes me anymore. Let's go over here, cool. Okay, so I've got my Cosmos DB linked up. I can see that online sales hedge tab. That is a linked service that I created last time. And then in there, I've got my sales. So that is my analytical store enabled collection. So you can see the difference between the two. Sales, I've turned my analytical store on. So it's automatically always creating those little parquet data sets for me to go and query. Products, I haven't. 
So you can see based on the icon, which is which, which is going to be fast for me to query, which is going to be a little bit slower because it's having to read all the JSON. And then when I right click on that sales, get two choices, a new SQL script and a new notebook. So a notebook used to be there. We could do that previously. Now we've got this new SQL script. I want to go and query you through SQL on demand. It's a great option. We've now got it. So we get this. So we can automatically say select top 100 open row set to Cosmos DB style um, source. The account is my, um, the link, my database on my sales, and it wants a key. And that, that is really weird to me. I'm assuming, I am hoping and praying that this is just because it's in preview. It's a, in preview within the wider signups preview. So to compare it to how we see it when we're going from the Spark pools, Spark pools loads up format Cosmos, Option, it's a sign up link service. Go and get it from the online sales HTAP. Get it from my link service. Don't bother storing credentials, hard coding credentials within the script. Now that hasn't been enabled to for serverless on demand yet. So serverless on demand needs a key. I need to hard code a connection credential into my script for to be able to use this kind of um, SQL on demand on top of my Cosmos DB. So I can go to Cosmos, I can go to keys, I can show the internet my keys. So if any of you actually bother handwriting out those keys to get onto my demo database, go nuts. I probably will recycle the keys there. Uh, and then I can run this and just get that as a live query across the contents of that Cosmos DB. So again, this is querying those Parquet files. It's not querying the JSON directly because this is an analytical, analytical store enabled collection. And there we go. So I can go and do that. So the fact I'm having to hard code things, uh, it's not great, but the fact I can do that, I can just write SQL directly over my Cosmos DB is awesome. That's really, really cool. So we can get lots and lots of stuff in there and we can go and get some facts and figures. So that's good, that's the new bit. That is the, the new bit of functionality is the ability to use SQL on demand either through the browser or through Management Studio, through Data Studio, anywhere that can talk to a SQL Server endpoint, Power BI, um, then we can actually now use this as a source. So that's cool, that's really, really good. Um, What's this Lambda thing? How do we actually build that out? So I've got a few bits in here. So firstly, a Spark script. So I'm using um, Spark, I'm in my Spark pool, I'm writing this in Python, and I'm saying, well, a new data frame that is spark.read, OLAP style, as I said, getting it from the linked service, so I don't have to hard code credentials, uh, and I'm just loading that in as a data frame. And then creating a quick uh, temporary hive view so I can write some SQL over it, and I'm saying, make a new data frame, which is spark.sql, select the count of sales, the total number of sales, uh, the total amount of sales, and bring me back my max timestamp. So I want to know what was the point that I last calculated this aggregation from. Okay, so that's in, that's going to go through and that's going to work things out. Uh, we can see what it looks like, so I can see if I ran this, I'd have total number of sales, sales amount, max timestamp, all of that good stuff. I'm then writing that out. So I'm saying just save it down to the leg, save it back to the leg. I just want to go and use that for reference. Uh, it's a bit overkill doing parquet for a single record, but eh, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm then saying create a table. So I want to save this as a Spark Hive table called HDAP. So it's in a database called HDAP, it's a table called sales using parquet from that location. Essentially, register this thing as a Hive table. Now, as soon as I've done that, that means when I'm in my workspace, I can then see this HTAP database over there. It's got sales underneath it, so I can go and see. I did it a different structure when I first did it, it's fine. Um, so we've now got that registered. Now the cool thing with those registered Hive tables, as we've seen before, is SQL on demand can see them. It gets a replicated copy of the things that I save in there as long as it's a valid file format. So I can go over into SQL on demand, so I can do it from here. I can say go, do a SQL script, go and query that sales information. So actually I've now, because I've done that prep in Spark, and because I've registered it in Hive, then inside SQL on demand, which we've seen can do that query on top of Cosmos DB via C uh, sign up to link now. And it can also go and query our saved table. Even if our Spark pool's turned off, that's just going to go and query the lake. That's great, because that means we've got both sides of the picture. We've got something that can query the latest aggregation, the latest batch view, and something that can go and query the Cosmos DB live, or as close to live as our analytical store is, which currently looks like it's a minute or two behind. Uh, and then we can get this view. So that means we can build up basically a Lambda function. Not a Lambda function, oh, <laughs> a Lambda pattern. Um, okay, so I've got this Lambda script. So I've got the two different parts of my query. Again, this is SQL on demand. So we can do exactly the same as what we've just done. Go and read my total sales, 
to go and get my information in. And that we have added the source. So you can see that's my batch. The last thing I actually sort of cached in from my um, live table is this one. So account sales of 22. Uh, and then I can do this query. So I'm saying, do essentially the same aggregation, right? So count the sales, sum up the total amount, give me a max of timestamp from live. So this is going back to Cosmos DB each time I run this query. I'm using that open row set with my hard-coded key uh, and I'm pulling that live sales and I'm just filtering it, saying where the timestamp of the records I'm pulling back from Cosmos DB is greater than the max timestamp from my sales. So only give me events in that Cosmos DB that are after the point that I'm looking at in my batch view. So if, whenever I reprocess my batch view, I don't have to change anything in the config. My script's just gonna, still going to work. It just means the watermark from where it'll accept transactions in my, the live part of my query will change. It'll just get updated as my sales table updates. So if I run those two together, I get two records. I see this is my batch. So that's what's happened in my batch view. And then this is everything that's come in live since I last ran that batch view. So that means I get kind of both sides of the picture. So then to do it combined, I just wrap those both in the subquery. Say, give me the count of sales across both, the total of um, sales across both, and the max timestamp across both. And I can run that, and that's going to give me the up-to-date view of things. So again, so just simply add those together, shows me the total amounts, gives me that. Now we can prove that that's working. If we go back to my Cosmos DB, go back to my Data Explorer, I've got my little file generator thing. Whoops. So this is just going to spit up a few things. And I've basically made this little script to just randomly generate um, a little sale. I'm going to run that. And that's just making some sales for me. Mm -mm -mm. Now I've left this in a long one and that might get a little sales collision. Uh, <laughs> it might break. It's just a quick demo script, but at least that is now spitting out sales. So once we've given it a minute or two, we should be able to back inside Synapse, rerun this and see our live total ticking up. So let's just do it on the inside one. Let's see if we can see, do we have more than nine in our live? If not, we might have to wait a minute or two. 15, okay. So that's now going up. That's now a ticking up. As we get new objects created in there, we should see this periodically update, which means if we run our whole thing, instead of seeing what, 2631, we'll see that number ticking up as we get more and more things coming in. So this is now a live real-time query, real-time query. It, we're now as real-time as the analytical store will be, which again, we've got no control over. It looks like that's updated every between like three and five minutes, I think. Um, as they move towards GA, I think they're hoping on squeezing that down a bit, but again, I don't know. It's kind of like you're relying on that black box to actually say it's as fast as it, they're gonna make it, essentially. But it's nice that we don't have to do anything there. I think that's gonna, right? It hasn't broken yet, well, that's nice. Um, so we can just kind of periodically come back to this. And this gives us near real time, as near as we need to be for real time. Now, if we were actually desperate and saying, no, 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 this has to be a couple of second latency, this wouldn't be an approach we'd use. We'd build something that is actually streaming it, probably reading from the Cosmos DB change feed directly, and we'd be actually consuming those records via an actual stream tech. So I have a Spark pool spun up, ingesting it properly, constantly. Um, in this case, this is the easy mode. In order to do this, I don't actually have to have anything spun up. All I have to have is, this is the last point I did by batch process, which could be overnight. And then this is just gonna run and charge me per query because I'm using SQL on demand, but I don't have to have a cluster spun up. So it means I can get within a couple of minutes versus a uh, version of real time without having to invest a ton in a load of compute that's just turned on waiting for me. So that is all I wanted to go through. That is the new part of Synapse Link, which is the ability to query Synapse Link using SQL on demand. And it's the ability to do things like the Lambda architecture, to be able to start to piece together some parts of that Synapse jigsaw, which is the Spark pools and SQL on demand and the Synapse Link integration and a bit of the Lake integration. And actually we're starting to see some architectural patterns emerge as we get more and more mature through the preview. So that is all I wanted to share today. I'll put a, as usual, a video and a subscribe link and go nuts. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. It helps us know that what we're actually making is right for you guys. And as always, any of the videos you want to see, let us know in the comments and we'll see what we can do. Otherwise, have fun. Cheers.